Maestro Manfred Honeck, Maria Duenas, welcome to Pittsburgh. We're at Heinz Hall, your debut, Maria, and Paganini's first violin concerto, a tradition, the holiday concert, which uh, brings together the beautiful mood of the Vienna New Year's Day concert. We must talk about that in, in a moment, but I want to ask you, were you surprised to learn today that you've been nominated for a Grammy Award with your Beethoven Ninth Symphony and the engineer has been nominated as well because of the clarity and beauty of the sound. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I must say we are all thrilled and so happy to hear this um, message today in the week of Thanksgiving. I must say you must congr congratulate all those who are worked on this CD, the orchestra members, the soloists, and the choir. Um, it's wonderful that in, in time of this were the message of freedom, the message of brotherhood and love, uh, which is the content of, of the Beethoven Ninth Symphony, that it gets um, um, so much um, attention now with our CD. I'm very happy and so um, thrilled and, and proud also that we have another nomination here in Pittsburgh with this world-class orchestra. This weekend is extra special. Now, there's always someone who hasn't been to the party yet. What is the thinking behind putting together the program for this concert? We have Maria at the center with the Paganini First Concerto, but it's in the spirit of what happens in Vienna on New Year's Day at the Musikverein. You've played in the concert as a violist and a member of the Vienna Philharmonic, and you bring that beautiful spirit of January 1 to Heinz Hall. Well, it goes actually back to 2008 when I started um, as music director of the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Um, I wanted to do a concert with music, uh, with light music, with music of my hometown in, the, in the Johann Strauss music. And as we don't play um, um, New Year's concert at the moment, um, I thought Thanksgiving is the best. Family comes together and we enjoy music and we are always inviting uh, interesting guests, the stars of tomorrow. And that's the reason why Maria is here. Uh, Maria is, is one of the best and exciting young violinists in the world we have and I'm so thrilled um, to have Maria with, here with Paganini but to play Paganini with an uh, with, uh, 18-year-old fantastic um, uh, violinist who has, I think in this year you had won three um, first prizes, three awards, uh, Menuhin the Tretakov um, competition and Carnegie Hall, yes. I think, yeah. in within short time, and then uh, that we have Maria here with his great um, and absolutely virtuosic um, uh, concerto that makes me so happy. And that's Thanksgiving. That's something what we want to celebrate together with you. Maria, when did you first meet Maestro Honeck? Oh, so I think it was a uh, couple of years ago. Um, I was so lucky that he could hear me in Vienna. I played for him. Um, and of course, I could never expect that such a great maestro could ever invite me. But yeah, it was, I was so happy when I got the first invitation from him. And it is each time a pleasure being on stage with him because, yeah, everything feels very easy. It's like we know each other much, much longer. So. Yeah, and of course, being in Pittsburgh uh, with him making my debut and playing the Paganini concerto, which is a concerto I've played the longest probably. Yeah, it's such a pleasure and I'm really, really looking forward. Paganini's first concerto. We haven't had it in quite a while at Heinz Hall. Why isn't it done more often? Because it's so fiendishly difficult for the soloist. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's a very challenging concerto, I think. Um, it's very often misunderstood, I would say, because I think people just see the virtuosic part, like the fast passages. And I think there is so much more behind it because Paganini, of course, as an Italian composer, is um, in the atmosphere of the opera, of Bel Canto. And I think um, you can see that in Paganini's works, these beautiful melodies. Um, yeah, and I think the challenge of this concerto is really to be able to combine the virtuosic part with the beautiful uh, melodies, yeah. One thing which comes out also, and this is what uh, um, Maria offers a lot, 
is the rubato plane. That means going forward and going back. Um, you can play this, um, this piece quite square so that it is laid like rhythm. I think this is the most boring thing if you don't do it. But uh, with the musicality of Maria, um, it is fun and it's really a pleasure um, that every phrase has, has a, a beginning and has a high point, a climax, and, and, and ends somehow. It's so logic what, what Maria is doing. Did Niccolo Paganini sell his soul to the devil? <laughs> I believe so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> during I think his so. lifetime. <laughs> the audience thought he did, yes. <laughs> because he was such yeah. a super virtuoso. Amazing and colorful character. Do you have a picture of Niccolo Paganini? Oh, of course. We all, I mean, I was a violinist myself, so, and, and, and we of all course. see this, actually, this, this picture. And, and uh, there's a lot of reports when uh, uh, Paganini came to s different cities in the world and also in Vienna, I think everybody wanted to hear him. He was the, the star, he was, might be the Beatles of the, uh, you know, of, yeah. of, of the 19th, beginning of 19th century. And of, the, of course, the Caprice, also the 24 Caprice are enormous challenging. It's, it's a must for every um, violinist, course, I think. Yeah. Did you play all the uh, 24 Caprice? All yeah, the... I mean, I think that's very important for your everyday technique. Yeah, I used to play every 24 Caprices, maybe once per week or something for that technique, yeah. <laughs> so you will have an encore than the 24 Caprice then? Uh, all 24, the... yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> And you have the instrument in your hand. This is a special instrument, yes? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's um, a violin I know very well. It wasn't easy at the beginning, but it is now very comfortable to play. It's a Niccolo Galliano from a German foundation. And yeah, I chose this violin for Paganini Concerto because it has very warm colors and very, um, a very big variety of colors. So that's very important for um, playing this music. Maria, this is your debut at Heinz Hall. Please tell us a little bit about you. You were born in Granada, there was Dresden and Vienna and, and Graz. Well, I want the audience to know this whole story. I mean, I'm a Spanish violinist, so um, I think I have this Spanish blood that I always like to show in my music. Um, yeah, but of course, for me, it was very important from the beginning to get to know different cultures, not just the Spanish one, but for me, it's very important, I think, for every artist, it should be a central part of the career to get to know different cities. And I'm, yeah, I'm really excited being here for the first time because um, that's all, also something I show when I perform. And what would you want to share about the other choices for your program this weekend? Well, the Fledermaus Overture is, um, is a hit, actually. It is the best overture Johann Strauss um, has ever written. I think it is such a great, brilliant music and um, goes also in the world of rubato playing. Explosion Polk, um, you will probably uh, understand there will be an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Might be on the, how they did it in earlier times, uh, well, we'll see. You played in the Vienna Philharmonic for the Vienna New Year's Day concert. Is there one January 1st that sticks out in your memory with the special conductor situation? Uh, it's always a phenomenal event. It is actually whoever stands in front of the orchestra, it was always something very special. The only thing what I have to say is uh, I never could um, really enjoy uh, the New Year's Eve uh, because I have to be prepared for the next concert. So we had to go to sleep a little bit earlier uh, um, uh, um, so that I, that, I, that Everybody's awake, you know, because the concert is at eleven o'clock in the morning, and so it's not possible to uh, to drink till the, till the morning and and, and uh, have champagne. And I think it is quite hard to play uh, this kind of music when you are drunk. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we we had a, a lot enormous discipline uh, nowadays. But it is was enjoying. Oh, this, uh, even as a viola player, we had a lot of accompanies and, and uh, play the rhythm, play the rubato. It's really challenging. It's really difficult to... to sometimes you think you can lay back and oh, enjoy the music. Now you have to be always careful. 
he was always listening to who is um, what, what kind because as Maria also said we always played it differently you know? if it, the day before is not the day after you know so with the same piece um, and you would think okay it's like this no it's not you know because we are dependent on the on the mood and and if the conductor also has some sadly some ideas uh, we have to follow and it's quite quite challenging Maria I will not be eating the turkey on Thanksgiving. I am a vegetarian, but I will watch Maestro eat. He loves Thanksgiving. He's really gotten into the spirit. I want to wish you the happiest of Thanksgiving holidays, and I give thanks for the two of you and your amazing art and talent and bringing us such joy this weekend, Friday and Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for this marvelous conversation. Thank, Thank you, Jim. We are Thank enjoying so to be much. here. It was wonderful Thank to you. make music here on Thanksgiving yeah. time. It's a pleasure.